Hello, I'm Monica McCain Sanchez, and this is CB8 Speaks, a monthly program about issues that are facing Community Board 8 in Manhattan. Community Board 8 is defined by Roosevelt Island and the Upper East Side, and the boundaries of the Upper East Side being from 59th to 96th Street, from East River to the Fifth Avenue. And tonight's program is being filled outside on top of one of the buildings of the Upper East Side. Because of the pandemic, we wanted to be very careful about protection of ourselves and our guests. So it's a little windy, and uh, but it adds some vibrancy to the show. So tonight's guest is Russell Squire, who's been nominated to be chair of Community Board 8. Russell, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Monica, and thanks to Will Sanchez also for putting this together. So let's start a little bit about yourself, your background. How long have you been with Community Board 8, and what committees have you served on? So I've been a full member of Community Board 8 since 2018. Before that, I was a public member of the Street Life Committee. I still serve on the Street Life Committee, and I'm also co-chair of the Environment and Sanitation Committee. And any other organizations that you've done volunteer work for in the past or currently? Yes, so I am the president of the Lexington Democratic Club, which is a local political club in our neighborhood, and that's entirely on a volunteer basis. I also belong to Congregation Orzarua. It's a synagogue here in the neighborhood, and uh, I've done volunteering through them. I also volunteered during the period of COVID. The Isaac Center had a great program that I, I think is still going on, where they've been delivering meals to homebound folks who, uh, who need it, who are indigent. So I volunteered with them to deliver meals and also with Council Member Power's office. He had a great program of uh, getting volunteers to call seniors in the district just to check in on them. This was earlier during the uh, earlier months of the lockdown, checking in on folks, making sure that they had what they needed, that they were doing okay, that they had the information that they needed to cope with the lockdown. That's great. Now, what leadership roles have you previously held, and how would you describe your leadership style? I would say my leadership style is fairly collaborative. I like to get different viewpoints from people and really get a full sense of an issue before coming to a decision, and also to the extent that we can get consensus on something, I always prefer to, to do it that way. So I think that's how I would describe it. Now, Talking deeper into the community board, um, what do you consider the most important issues confronting the community district in the next year, and how should the community board address these issues? So in our district needs statement, the community board consistently points to affordable housing, uh, schools, and uh, more park space as consistent needs for the community district, and I think that those are still going to be cr critical challenges for us going forward. But I think obviously we have the unique challenge in this time period of COVID-19 and responding to that and trying to recover from that. And I think that's gonna be a major, major challenge in the coming year. So I really want the community board to continue to be active in helping the community recover. I think we've done a pretty good job over the last year in having a really constructive role in that process as part of the my work on the environment Sanitation Committee is co-chair. Our committee partnered with the Health Committee earlier this year to do a number of programs related to contact tracing when that was starting to try and spread the word on contact tracing and um, inform people about what it was. I think there are other programs, and that's still going on, there are other programs also that I think the community board has done. I think we've done a good job of reaching out to small businesses, trying to make sure that they have the information that they need. And so I think those kinds of efforts are gonna to continue to be critical in the coming year as things are changing and adapting. And already we're having to adapt our response to the cold weather. And of course, we've come up with adaptations that were appropriate during the summer. Now things are getting colder and we're having to adjust. I really think the community board has a unique role to play here and can really be very helpful to the community because I think it provides a forum for different stakeholders in the community to come together and discuss what it's going to take for us to come back strong from this coronavirus crisis. I think this is a crisis that's required us all to be a little flexible and adaptive and there we've already seen that there have been responses to it and things like outdoor dining that were sort of unthinkable before the crisis hit. And so as there are more solutions like this, I think it's really going to be important for dialogue and basically getting 
small businesses, getting residents together to talk about what the solutions should be to make sure that solutions are being implemented in a way that works for everybody. And I think having a give and take there is important. And I think the work that we do, particularly in the committees on the community board, is really uniquely suited to do that. I think similarly, the way that the community board serves as a liaison between the community and government is also critical for this because government, like everybody else, is really flying blind a little bit in this crisis. And it's something that no one really has um, has encountered before. And we're trying to come up with solutions on the fly. And I think to have an opportunity for people to hear from the government what's coming down the pike, why it is they're doing the things they're doing, and that kind of thing. And at the same time, for city agencies to be able to hear from the community, from all facets of the community, what it is we need and what the challenges are that we're facing and what it is that we want the government to be doing more to try and address this crisis. And I think all of those are things that the community board is uniquely suited to assist with. Now, let's talk a little bit the, about the homeless population. In Community Board 8, um, and how do you feel they're being treated? Do you think there are enough services for them in this district? Well, I think the fact that we see so many homeless folks on the street is a sign that there are not sufficient services for them. So I would hope that we could add more, and that's one of the things that the community board has called for in its district needs statement that we recently passed for the coming fiscal year. It's really critical to get more services for folks so that they're able to stay off the street, and I think that's going to be a critical need, uh, particularly now. Again, I mean, this is another area where COVID has really shaken things up, and it's just upended our normal approaches to these things. And now with the weather getting colder, it's really critical that we address this soon to make sure that folks aren't uh, aren't stuck out on the street. Does community board, the current committees, cover the needs of the community? If you were to be made chair, would you remove or change or add committees, and in what ways? I think the current community, the committees that we have are good. I don't have any plans to change the standing committees that we have on the community board. I think in terms of adding committees, the one area where I would do that is I think a good approach when we have major development projects or other unique sort of temporary challenges that come down is to approach those through task forces. And that's something that the community board has done a number of times in the past. I think it's been effective. And so I would, if I were to become chair, I would certainly plan to appoint task forces to address those types of challenges. But other than that, I wouldn't plan to, or I don't currently have plans to really change the committees that we have. Okay. Now, how would you reach out to the community at large to make them more aware of Community Board 8 and the work that it's being done? So I think there are a number of ways to do this. I would say one of the silver linings in a way of the COVID crisis is that it has provided the community board with an opportunity to do more outreach, to have more programming where we're informing the community. I think one of the things that I have wanted to see, and I think a number of members on the community board have wanted to see for a long time, is trying to get the message out about the community board that we are not just a an obstacle or a bump in the road in the sense of something that applicants need to overcome to do whatever it is that they're coming before us to try to do, that we also have a positive role in the community and a positive contribution to make. And I think one of the chief areas where we do that is through liaising with the government and informing people and, and doing the programs that we do where we let people know what's going on and also take feedback, which we can then provide back to the city agencies. And I think COVID has been another opportunity to do that. And so the programming that we've had, again, going back to the contact tracing programming that we've done that I'm very proud of, and also the programming about small businesses. I think those have been very well received by the community. I think we're certainly gonna to need to do a lot more of that given all the challenges that we're gonna to continue to face. So I think continuing to do these events and committee meetings where we're informing people and letting people know what's going on is gonna be critical. Another area where I'd like to do more outreach is in the schools. I think, and that's of course challenging now with remote learning, but I do think that that's a particularly fertile area for the community board to do outreach. Because, you know, there's often talk about the lack of civics education or the lack of sufficient civics education. And I think in particular, the community board is the type of thing that people rarely learn about in textbooks, but it's a very important facet of our government. 
It's something that is very direct and that people can engage with very directly. It's close to the people. And so I think that in particular is going to appeal to students and make civic activism and civic engagement something that they can really relate to. And in particular, because community boards, now that the age limit has been lowered for membership some years ago, and we can have people who are as young as 16 serving on the boards, and we actually have high school students serving on community boards, I think to go into schools and talk to high school students or people who are almost high school students and tell them about the work that we do, I think that's going to be very exciting for folks uh, because these students are going to be able to see that this is something that they can get involved with now in terms of participating in the public meetings, but also in the near future as potential members. The last thing I would say on that point is I would like to see us do more outreach and more engagement with the residents of Isaacs and Holmes Towers. I think that I would really like to see more of the residents coming to our meetings, more engagement with them. I think that's an area where, um, where we can improve and I would like to do more of. Well, following up on that, um, how well does Community Board 8 reflect the demographics of the district in terms of age, income, education, nationality, ethnicity, or any other relevant social groups? Uh, if it doesn't have good re representation for certain groups, what can be done to improve it? So I think when it comes to racial and ethnic diversity, I think there's still, we've, we've made strides in that regard, but I think there is still more work that can be done. I think in other areas, I think the community board is pretty good. I think one of the strengths of the community board is we have a number of members who have been on the board for a long time, for decades, who have a lot of experience, really know their stuff. And I think that's a tremendous resource that we have as a board. At the same time, we also have a number of newer members who have joined in just the last few years who are bringing new perspectives. And I think that they are also a great resource and having that diversity of experience and diversity of viewpoint really strengthens the board and I think it's one of the great characteristics of Community Board 8. In terms of trying to diversify more, you know, the chair and the members of Community Board 8 don't pick the members. The members are appointed by elected officials and so fundamentally it's up to them to affect the diversity on the board. What the chair can do though is the chair does appoint the chairs of the different committees and so certainly in making leadership decisions about appointing new chairs uh, as that arises, you know, that's certainly something that I would look to as the chair and, and uh, keep in mind as I was doing that. Now you talked quite a bit earlier about COVID-19 and this, uh, let's talk even more about it because it has sort of upended the world. Uh, and since the, the pandemic began, um, Talk a little bit and recap what you've you've done in working with community on that. Um, and did you reach out to or volunteer to do any work with any other social or cultural groups in the district? Sure. So I have been in the city throughout the whole lockdown. So I have really, I think, experienced a lot of what the residents of the district have been going through. I was here during the early days of the more restrictive part of the lockdown. I was here as things were starting to go uh, and open up. And so I went and got a haircut after finally we were allowed to go out and do that. Um, you know, my girlfriend and I have been doing the outdoor dining as that started to open up. And so I've really been living through each of the phases of this very directly. And I think that's been valuable experience in figuring out how to confront this and dealing with it. As I mentioned before, I have been doing volunteering uh, through COVID. I, I did volunteer to help uh, with Isaac Center in their delivery of meals to homebound indigent people. And I also was part of Keith Powers' effort. I, I coordinated with his, uh, his office to call folks in the district, seniors, to make sure that they were doing okay and really just to check in on them and provide them with the information that they needed. Now, a lot of people agree that COVID-19 is not going to go away anytime soon. And even when vaccines are available, not everyone's going to be getting one immediately. In fact, some people may not even want to get one. So we're also hearing that the protection night might not be lifetime, even if you get a vaccine. So it's going to be part of our lives for many years. How can Community Board 8 help our businesses and residents and students right now? I think the kinds of things that we can do now, again, it really has to do with figuring out how we're going to adapt to changing circumstances as the number of cases is increasing or not. And fortunately, we've been able to maintain a situation in New York City where, where things are pretty good, although we do have occasional 
spikes, fortunately not so much in this neighborhood. But as weather is changing, as circumstances are changing, I think the community board is going to continue to be critical to getting the word out about what's going on and getting input from the community about what it is that needs to happen and what it is that folks would like to see, what changes in the policies that have come down. We need adjustments to account for things that weren't anticipated, that kind of thing. I think all of that is stuff that the community board really uh, is uniquely well suited to do. And I think we've shown uh, an ability to do that so far. And I want us to continue to do that and frankly do even more of that. Okay. Well, thank you so much for this great conversation. And please, everyone, please visit our website, cbm.com, where you can see the list of the committees and the dates and times they meet. Everything's on Zoom now. And again, thank you for watching. Have a pleasant evening. Thank you.